Hello folks, today we are going to see why we should use tagging in our AWS accounts. Quite often we hear people saying that you should tag your resources. You should add this tag, that tag. I want this tag to be added for this reason. Let us go ahead and see what are the reasons why we should add a tag and what are the common reasons that other people are using tags. First of all, before doing that, we need to know what is the problem if that happens if we are not using tags. Let us imagine an AWS world with, without tags. Let us say you go ahead and sign up for a new account. Your account is not having any resources right now. And then a developer comes and starts launching some resources for your business unit. After a period of time, you find that AWS is great. And then another business unit comes and asks that, let me add some more resources to your account. And then after some time, these two business units and developers need to share some information. So they go ahead and share some common databases and some EC2 instances and all those things. Then some more servers comes into the picture, notifications, buckets, and Lambda functions. Over a period of time, all these resources keeps on adding up and each of them have an unit cost and slowly it gets built up. And finally, your, your organization is going to get a huge bill. And the problem is that is when you get a huge bill like this, you have a problem of explaining what costs are going where. For example, the common shared database, who is going to own that and who is going to pay for that? How do we know that exactly the business unit one is using 50% of the database and 50% of the cost for the database needs to go to that business unit? Or let us say HR, which is using most of the data in the database, whereas uh, security team is not using much of the database, then how should a cost has to go between these two teams? So how do we answer these questions? Then who is going to save the money here because all of those business units are using their own resources and whose responsibility is to go ahead and save the money. So if they all pull their resources, you can get some bulk disk accounts and go ahead and buy some reserved instances and all those things. So how do you own this responsibility and how do you go ahead and do that? So these are the questions that needs to be answered when you have an account without any tagging in it. So how do we go ahead and do that? AWS helps you with this. You can assign metadata to each of those resources that is in your account, and these are called as tags. What exactly is this tag then? So when I say tags, what do you mean by that? A tag is nothing but a simple label, and the label has two items. One is called as a key, and it can have an optional value also. So let us see a simple example of what a tag looks like. A tag will have two elements, as I said, key and a value. A key can be, for example, a name. When you take an EC2 instance, you can have it as a name as a production web server 001 or test environment 001. Or you can have it like, say, the role of the server, saying HR departments, database store 001 or snapshot 001. So the key value path is quite customizable. You can have anything that you want and you can have a value, you don't have to have a value. So all these combinations are possible. So it's completely flexible for you to choose how you want to do it. So when we say that when you want to make a tags, how does it help us? Let us say you have added tags now, name, and then an environment, and then a role, and all those things. How does it help you actually? When you add a tag, you have the ability to manage the resources, you can search the resources, or you can have a better uh, alerting mechanism or a chatting mechanism or reporting mechanism also. How do you do that? AWS provides you a resource grouping API. Through this API, you can automate the generation of reports. So all you have to do is go ahead and use your favorite programming language like Python or Node.js or Java or anything. Call this API, group the resources, build up the reports. If you're not familiar with that, you can still go ahead and use the AWS console, go to the resources, and you can still build a dashboard and create a report out of that. So what is the next step after building the reports? Then you start building the charges to the appropriate teams. Let us say this is a simple account, and then there are some tags in that account. Let us say we call those tags as responsible for the team called LO, and then all the cost associated with those resources is associated to the team LO. And then you have another team blue who are also having some resources on the same account. They also have their own tags. So the costs associated with those resources are going to the blue team now. 
and then let us say there is one more team coming up, a green team, and they also have resources, the cost gets go allocated to that team now because we have a tax like that. So even if you have more accounts, you can keep on associating the cost to the appropriate team because we have the tagging in place for them. So what happens when you don't have a tag, then this is what is going to happen. Each of those team or each of the accounts or the owner of those accounts are going to get the untagged cost. So this is the reason why you should have resources which are capable of supporting tags should have the mandatory tags or the tags that are recommended by your organization. Otherwise, the account owner is going to pay for the resources which they are not exactly consuming of their own. So this is the reason you should go ahead and definitely build tags. If you're not doing that, I would strongly recommend you to go ahead and do that. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can build your own tagging strategy and what should be the mandatory tag, what should be the technical tag and all those things. Keep watching. Happy learning.